Hi everyone, my name is Elisa Tilster and I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Australia. Today I'll be showing you how I have coloured in the bird and the holly and the leaves from the Happy Holidays stamp set. This is a really lovely stamp set, especially if you like a little bit more of a vintage feel to your uh, Christmas cards. And there's some really lovely um, sentiments that go along with this one as well. Christmas blessings to you and yours, wishing your family health and happiness throughout the coming year. It's just a really lovely um, set, that one. And and it also comes with a matching punch if you wish to purchase it in a bundle. So this punch here is a border, it's actually a, a border punch. So as with the examples for these two, you can actually punch it as a border on your cardstock or you can use the pieces that come out of it to create your own um, holly leaves and berry leaves as well. For this card, um, I am just using the stamp set. So I will be colouring with blends today. So as we know, we need the Memento black ink to be stamping with. I've already pre-stamped mine and I'm just using some plain basic white cardstock. Now we're going to start with the holly leaves first. I will just see whether I can zoom in for you. And uh, so find it a little bit easier to see when it's zoomed in a little bit. So the two colours that I'll be using for the leaves is the Poppy Parade and also the Granny Apple Green. Did I get the right Granny Apple Green? No, I got Shaded Spruce. We better swap them over. Thankfully all my blends are just right behind me. So let's start with our berries. Now I'm using the Poppy Parade and I will be using the, dark, uh, the, the bold tip the bullet tip, not the brush tip. So if you're looking at your blends, you'll notice that there's a bolder line for your brush tip and a thinner line for your solid bullet tip, which is the one that I use all the time. Now, when we look at our image, make sure I'm in screen, we notice that there's already a little bit of uh, artist shading already. So I can quite easily come in and pop in my dark poppy parade around the bottom. And then I'm just gonna pop a little bit around the top of it as well. Then I'm going to come in with my light poppy parade and just go backwards and forwards and just leave a tiny smidge of white so that I can get a little bit of shine on my berry leaves. So I'm going to do that again or another way you can do it is just to do a little halo, a little oval up the top there and then just come back in and just go either side of that. It does close up a little bit. So practice makes perfect with getting this done. So just around a little bit over the top. Perhaps if you're just starting out with this to leave that white area a bit bigger and then just come on either side of it and that way you can really keep it open. Uh, what I tend to like to do afterwards, which I will do now, is just come in with a little bit more dark just along the bottom and that will also help with your little highlights. Now the leaves are really simple as well. So coming in with my dark granny apple green first and I'm just going to follow where the artist has drawn in these lines. So this one is super easy to do and I tend to go in the direction that they have gone as well. And a little bit up here. And then it's just a matter of coming in with your light granny apple green and filling in the rest. And then just going over that line area so that they blend in nicely. So this is pretty basic blends colouring. And then I like to just go over the top once more. So just adding in a little bit more of the dark. And then just again with the light, just over, but not over the entire area, just over the line. Is you can actually layer your blends as many times as you like and that's how easy the leaves are 
Okay, so next we're going to move on to our bird and I'm going to use a different style of colouring for this one. I'm just going to pull my chair in. Okay, so my colour palette for the bird is my Crumb Cake Light and Dark. I've got some uh, Soft Suede Light and Dark, Calypso Coral Light and Dark and also the Ivory, so just to add a little bit to his feet. So I'm going to start off with my Crumb Cake. And I did think I pulled out the, the Calypso Coral for um, his underbelly because I thought that it would work in quite nicely with the Poppy Parade. All right, make sure I'm in the right area for you. Okay, now I'm going to start with my dark. And I'm going to use a like a flicking motion rather than a colouring motion. So, and this way, I'm just going to follow the artist's lines, the sketch lines again into those areas. Oops. And again, I'm using the bullet tip. And even when I'm doing such a larger area, I'm also going to use the bullet tip because I just want um, stroking motions. And I do believe that my crumb cake looks like it's running out, but hopefully I will get enough out of it to colour in my image. swing around sometimes it's easier to flick in the opposite direction rather than pulling to yourself to flick away okay next I'm going to come in with my dark calypso coral and again I'm just going to flick little short flicking motions and I'm going to join that right up into the the dark And then coming in with my light, with my bullet, and just continue that flicking motion. And I'm going to bring this one up right under his wing, and I'm just sort of going to make shorter flicking motions. So when I've got a lot of space to cover, I can do longer flicks. And when I've got shorter space, I can do little short flicks. And then I will come back down. Hopefully I've got a little bit more crumb cake. And I'm just going to bring that into the Calypso Coral. Like so. Now, I'm not going to put the lid on that one completely because uh, I do have trouble getting the lid off of that one. So actually I'll just leave all the lids partially on while I'm still coloring. Okay, so next we're gonna move on to our soft suede. And again, starting with the dark, I always start with my dark ones. And we're just going to flick around these shaded areas that I can see to start with. And again, I'm just doing strokes and it looks pretty messy until I get to the finished, um, you know, all my coloring's finished. So around the wing here, I, there's a little bit of shading here and there's little bits of shading under each of these little feathers. So I'm just going to flick that in towards the center. And then this way, I'm gonna flick this way towards the center. And then just a little bit underneath that little bit of a feather there. And then of course it's tail. So flick that towards his body and that's all I'm going to do at the moment. So coming in with the light one, this is where, and it can, I I've, must admit, I've not um, played with this type of technique too much, is that I'm just going to, actually I might turn him around just so that I can flick away from my body. So you can see, and, and I'm just going to continue to do all of that. And there's lots of white spaces at the moment. And then coming towards his body again from the tail area. And then along his wing. So 
So flicking from the dark and into the light. Okay, we still have a fair bit of white space here. So I'm just gonna turn around and I'm gonna continue to do flicking motions, but I'm just gonna start them down further. Okay, there's still a lot of white space going on. This is where I sort of tend to go backwards and forwards between my light and dark, just adding enough color until I'm really, really happy with it. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do now. So I'll probably add a little bit more to his head and bring the darker into his body more. Then I'll go back to the light. And when you're doing your flicking, just try and keep the strokes like apart from each other. Don't, um, like if you tend to put your stripes on the same area, you'll lose the stripiness of it, basically. You'll end up with just a solid line. So you can just keep going backwards and forwards until you are happy with how it looks. So I will head, probably head back to the dark again and do a little bit more around his head and just try and keep the strokes a little bit separate from each other. Back to the light. And as you do this and go back and forth, you'll find that your white actually uh, disappears. Okay, now I will do his beak. Now, birds' beaks generally aren't yellow. They are a darker color. So I'm just going to use my soft suede and I'm gonna do under his beak a little bit darker than the top of his beak. And this is a classic one of just putting down lots of layers to get the depth that you want and a little bit of contrast. Now for his feet, I am using um, crumb cake dark to start with. And I'm just going to bring that down partially into his legs. And then I'm actually gonna use the ivory just to give it a little bit of a pinker tone. Now, depending on what your card looks like, you're either gonna see his feet or you're not gonna see his feet. Okay, and then just to finish that off, I added a bit of extra dark soft suede just under where his body is, just to cast a little bit of shadow onto his legs. Again, you can go backwards and forwards if you don't like that little mark there, you can eliminate that. And then bring in your ivory again. I actually do like a little bit of heavier shadow when I know that his body will be sitting over the top of his legs. So I think that I would be pretty happy with that. Now, depending on what you use with your card, um, I will show you an example of what I've done first. I colored in my card this way and I had only done a little bit of the red under his belly, but when I assembled my card, I discovered that my leaves actually covered a fair bit of his, of his body. So what you can do is just continue. You can come in as many times as you want. And I extended my Calypso Coral up his belly a little bit more so that when I made my card, I could actually see some of that color because it's just really pretty. Now, when you are doing your flicks, just try and lift up, especially in this area where we don't want it to, um, we just want it lightly blended with the, with the crumb cake. So sort of just flick and flick your wrist so that you don't have a, like a, a line like that. It's more of a, an action like that. Hopefully that explains that a little bit. And then of course, uh, you can come in with your 
crumb cakes again and just add a little bit extra, especially if you found that your body has gotten dark, you might like to come in and just add a little bit more um, depth with your crumb cakes as well, just to make sure that your tonings are all nice. If I had a little bit more ink in my barrel, I knew it was running low, but I didn't realize it was that low. I just colored with it this morning and it was it was okay. I got enough out of it, but it's like I'll be putting a crumb cake on my order. So that is our coloring of the bird and the leaves. Let me just come back and I will show you the card that I have made. Just these out of the way so this is the card that I created using my colored images now the background I have run through with the Merry Melody 3D embossing folder which is all musical notes which is really pretty so I ran that through the embossing machine and then um, I sponged around the outside areas with a soft suede ink just over the top of the raised areas to lift them up a little bit and then I sponge tone on tone so crumb cake onto the crumb cake in the center as well and uh, Christmas blessings to you and your family is just stamped in soft suede onto basic white and then I don't know whether you can see but I added a little bit of Wink of Stella to my holly berries just to add a little bit of interest in there as well so you can see where here i've had to um, increase the color of my calypso coral because you couldn't see it it was all based down here so i had to extend it up and you'll know whether to do that when you are assembling your cards and of course you can't see the feet on my birds so it just depends on how you're um doing your cards whether you whether you actually need to color his feet in or not and especially when you're cutting him out you might decide just to cut the feet off i left them in there and uh, stuck my berries on top of them and then just a couple of rhinestones to finish it off so that is my happy holly days christmas card um i am still making christmas cards i don't really need to i've done i think i have enough christmas cards now to uh, start sending them out but um you know, it's just so pretty. It's just very nice to colour in. I think I might actually, maybe I'll maybe I'll turn this one into a birthday card with some other bright flowers instead of the holly berry. So now that I have another coloured image, thanks very much for watching. Uh, if you are requiring any of the products that I have used today, you can shop online with me. And uh, so you can message me or I will have links in the description and uh, you can go and do your shopping that way. So thanks very much for watching. Bye.